It is time for we to go to the world. Please stop. Let me tell you something. Listen, this word, the Bible said this word is a three S word. So the topic of today is you must be born again in Christ. That is a series that will be running all through this month. You must be born again. All through all through this this um something. The series that will be running is you must be born again in Christ. You must be born again in Christ. So this month, we want to begin to take our bait in righteousness. We want to begin to see, see everything that God says in righteousness. Now let's go. Do you know that God said, if you obey me and serve me, you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. That is what God says. Now, it's just like Dangote now. Dangote is spending his years in prosperity and his days in pleasure. Dangote is enjoying himself. God said, if you obey me, you will be in that form. He said, this book of the law will make your way prosperous. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He said, this book of the law. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Let's see what is here. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from their mouth, but you shall meditate therein day in, day out. Then shall you make your way prosperous and have good success. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 said, This book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. So, this book that we want to be reading today, it is out of it that our success lies. It is out of it that our way will be prosperous. That is the book. We want to go ahead and begin to look at things in this book that will make our way prosperous. The next one said that if they will obey, if that would if, if if they will obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity. That is the book of Job. Now, the book of I want to read one verse. Act chapter, Act chapter 3 verse, actually that 3 verse 21. He said the time, until the time of restoration of everything which the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Until the time. At chapter 3, from verse 21. If you are there, you can read. He said, okay, at chapter 20, chapter 3, verse 19. He said, repent ye, repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sin may be blotted out. All of us see, no matter the wrongdoing, will be blotted out this month in the name of Jesus. He said, that your sin may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus, Jesus Christ, whom before was preached unto you, whom, whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things. Please look at me. Until the time of restitution of all things, by the special grace of God, whatever you might have lost will be restituted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Until the time that God will restitute all things to you. He said, but you will need to repent. You will need to repent. Mighty Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent it therefore, so that when the time of refreshment comes, you will partake into it. He said, the foundation standeth sure. The foundation standeth sure. The foundation standeth sure. Having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. You see, what we are talking about is that until you depart, there is no restoration. Until you depart from iniquity, God will not restore. God may hardly restore those kind of people. You see, let me tell you something. We read from the book of Rafa Shekatawa. We read from the book of Matthew chapter 5. From the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse, verse 34. He said that you see, in the book of 1 John, 1 John said that how do we know who is Antichrist? Antichrist simply means somebody who is not following Jesus Christ 
principle. How do we know who is Antichrist? Antichrist simply means Jesus or somebody who is not fully Jesus Christ principle. So, um, the book of 1 John said that in the last days, there will be many spirits. In the last days, there will be diverse of spirits. So, however, this is how to know the evil spirit. The one that did not say that Jesus Christ is Lord. The one that did not follow Jesus Christ in book. That is how we will know that it is Lord. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 said that. Matthew chapter 5 verse 34. Chapter 43. Matthew 5 43. We want to see. We first first know. Because this today's um, this thing is. Today this thing is. You must be born again in Christ. Not only you must be born again, you must be born again in Christ. You must be born again in Christ. By the way, please put your hands together for these our children. Do you know what happened? All of them are saving their money. They are saving money in my hand. I told them if you save 100 naira, if you save 100 naira, I'll give you times two. So they have already started to restitute their life. Sometimes we think that being born again means stop drinking. But being born again means how to manage your finance. Now let's go ahead and look at verse 43. Remember what we were talking about? We were saying that we were saying that um, Antichrist, the book of John said Antichrist, so many who do not follow God. Let's go ahead and see Antichrist. Let's go ahead and see. You have heard that it has been said that thou sh should love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. This is one spirit of Antichrist. Because Jesus Christ wants to come out in a new way. Antichrist is anybody who goes against Jesus Christ. Any principle that goes against Jesus Christ. Principle. Now, this verse is giving us one thing of Antichrist. Hate your enemy. Kill them. Do them wickedness. Now, going with this one now, we will now go and judge how many people are following Jesus Christ in Nigeria. Now, this verse is saying that you have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. That is what it was said. But I say to you, love your enemy, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, that you may be the children of God in heaven. The last verse of that Bible said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father is perfect. If you love your enemy, that is the criteria for Jesus Christ's perfection. You know, the world will say that don't drink, that is when you are perfect. Don't smoke, that is when you are perfect. Don't do this. But Jesus Christ here is saying that the major justice for his own perfection is for you to love your neighbor. Do good to them who harm you. Love. Pray, even pray for them. Pray for the people. Love, your, love them. That is if you have power, still bless them despite their wrongs doing. Even when they don't want to change. You remember, Matthew said, um, Pete Piro, Peter came to Jesus Christ and I said, somebody have offended me plenty times in a day. How many times can you offend me before I stop? He has offended me seven times in a day. I think my, I have owed my patient enough. Jesus Christ, allow me to lose my temper. I think I have tried. He has offended me seven times. Jesus Christ, allow me to lose my temper. But Jesus Christ said that, no, I will allow you, but it will be seven times times 70 times 70. So in a day, in a day, seven times times 70. That is, for see you die, just go. Somebody offends you, seven, 4,700 something, 4,700 times. And before, four, four, 400 and seven something in a day. Because I said, how many times will you somebody offend me in a day? So that is what we are talking about. That is what we are talking about. So here, Jesus Christ saying that, if you want to be perfect, love your head enemy. Do good to those who hate you. That is what he's talking about here. You see, there is two commandments in the Bible. Jesus Christ came and said that, and said that, somebody came and asked Jesus Christ, Which, what should I do to inherit? Love God with all your heart, with all your name, with all your everything. The second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. So those, he said, upon these two commandments, hang on. In the book of Luke, Jesus Christ said that, love God with all your soul. And with all the, the second one is love your neighbor. On, uh, this commandment is bigger than burnt offering and sacrifice. 
Today, 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 what do we see in the church? We see people bringing their money, bringing everything, bringing those things. But God said, when we love God and we love our neighbor, this is greater than everything on earth. God is greater than born offering and sacrifice. So the question is, what is born again? Let's go and begin to define some term. We have, I have established that without born again, we, me and you, may not go anywhere. You see, the law of God is given for us to be profitable. The law of God is given for us to be profitable. If you don't plant tree, you cannot expect to eat. If you don't plant mango seed, you cannot expect The same way, if immediately you continue to live nonsense, if you continue to live your life anyhow, you may not experience the goodness of God. Therefore, life is predictable. Life is according to law. If you see red light on the road, traffic light, you know that's all. When you see a traffic light, there is something you should know. Red means stop. Yellow means ready. Greens mean go. Go away. Now, if you see red, if the light shows red, are you supposed to go? You're supposed to stop because there is danger in the front. But if you now go, who will have accidents? Is it the government? No, it's not the government that will have accident and die. It's not God. So you being righteous, it's not God that you are helping. Now, when God told Adam and Eve, that the day that you eat this fruit, you will be driven out of the Garden of Eden. Now, is it God that was driven out of the Garden of Eden? No. Eve went to eat the fruit and he was driven out. The same way God is telling me and you that we should stop doing some things. We will go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Go and see all what Jesus can say that we should not do. We will go to 1 Corinthians before the end of this message. Please, I like you. From today, try to repent. Try to start to live a focused life. Try to learn how to manage your resources. Try to repent. Try to repent. Let's come back to Jesus Christ. Let's come back to Jesus Christ. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 6. 1 Corinthians 6 9. 1 Corinthians 6 9. We want to go and see some. He mentioned here some, some things that are seen here. So we want to follow the Bible. 1 Corinthians 6 9. Know ye. Let me start from. Dear any of you having a matter against. I am reading from verse 1. Dear any of you having a matter against another, go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints. He said, if you have any matter, go and settle it. If you hate anybody, go and settle it. Love is number one thing. Now, we are going to read a lot of things that the Bible said, don't do. But love, he started the Bible, started that verse of Bible with love, your enemy, love your neighbor. Let's now go to the verse 9. The verse 9 now begins to say, he said, say, okay, verse 8. Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. If God said, First commandment is don't defraud your brother. Don't cheat somebody because he doesn't have anything. Don't defraud anybody. Try to help instead. Look at Nigeria today. Look at Nigeria today. During COVID-19, they gave Indomie, rice, all those things that go and share to these poor people. Nigeria is the poor, is the poverty capital in the world. It's the poorest nation in the world as of today. So everybody, all the old world now concerned that this COVID-19, even when Nigeria were going to work, they were not seeing food to eat. Even when they didn't go to work morning, afternoon, evening, the money did not encourage them to feed. So now COVID-19, they now said we should close them inside the house. So take this rice, take this indomie, take this thing, otherwise you will die. Take some money. So, but what did our senators, governors, all of them do? They carry this thing. Not this, I know that if they go and eat it, all. if they go and eat it seven and leave the poor, at least that one is even manageable. Let's, no, it's not good, though. But I'm just saying that that one is even a little bit considerable. They carry this thing and keep it for it to rot it. You remember the story? You, re you remember the story? They call it a warehouse, I mean. Uh, palliative. So, and some of the palliative were getting spoiled. You remember? Some of the palliative were getting spoiled. So, this is how we defraud poor people. It's just like me now. Somebody gave me money. For me to give to these children. Somebody gave me that for me to share it today on Sunday. That is exactly what happened because these children will be hungry. 
we have a lot of children here, we have like four of them. So we are now starting the rice. Not as if I eat it too, if I eat it itself, although it's wickedness, but that one is even manageable. Maybe the person did not consider me. We can say maybe he thinks that I am big, but he did not know that no money in my pocket, so I eat it. I take care of myself first. But let's forget about that one is still wickedness. So that one is sino. Yeah. But this one I now carry the I now carry the food. Go and store it. And then the food start to the food start to rot in. And then right in my front I come and I look at the children. And they are dying, they are turning to skeleton. That is just what happened in Nigeria. Oh. Now the Bible, I come and look at the children and the food that they gave me to give to them is getting rotten. And I look at them, oh, hungry is worrying you people. That is exactly what happened in Nigeria. Ah. You remember last month, we said that anywhere that there is wickedness against poor people, God himself will make that land to shake. You remember Matthew chapter, Psalm chapter 86. He said, God sits in the congregation of the mighty. He judge among God. How long will you do wickedness? To the poor and afflicted. He said, you know not. Because you know not, the head will begin to shake. There will be earthquake. Poverty will strike the land. Even when you build your big house, Steve went and cut your head. Because you don't know that poor people is the number one priority before God. So, let's go and continue to read the scene that we see there everybody. Know ye not that the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God, unrighteousness, anything that is unrighteous, will not, anybody that is doing unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God. Anybody that is living his life unrighteously will not inherit the kingdom of God. So think about you. Are you abusing person? Are you cursing? Are you stealing? Are you doing anything that is bad? He said, know ye not that, know ye not that unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicator. You, you are a young boy. You are fornicating. You are young girl, you are fornicating. Fornicator means somebody who is not married. Adultery means you marry and you are still going about doing nonsense with man and girl. He said, No, you not. Neither. Neither fornicator. No, adultery. Adultery means married woman. Fornicator means single. There is no husband. They have not married. No adulterous. No effeminate. Do you know the meaning of effeminate? Effeminate means somebody doing laziness. Time for you to go and help poor people. You are lazy. Time for you to teach somebody mathematics. Time for you to help somebody. That is effeminate. Effeminate. Let me see. Effeminate. Effeminate. Let me call it effeminate. Effeminate person is somebody who is doing like a pregnant. You, you, are, you are doing so slow. Time for you to do something you cannot do. Time to open mouth and talk and save somebody from problem. You cannot talk and save people from problem. That is a, 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 a feminist. That is, it came from fem, feminism. Feminism means anything that has to do with woman. Usually women are weak in the Bible. So feminism is this. So a feminism means a man or a woman. That begin to do that begin to do dull, dull. Time to work, time to read is tired. Time to is postponing so that tomorrow, tomorrow, of course, tomorrow will never finish. Time to do is postponing. If God said they will not, that person kind of person will not enter heaven. That means a, a fair minute, minute, a fair minute. That is the meaning of that a fair minute. Eh? A fair minute. A fair minute. A fair minute. Effeminate simply talk about all those swagbe. That swagbe here means time to. You see somebody, no feeling. No feeling. You are suspecting, oh, to, God will save the person. Whereas the thing that to save the person is in your pocket. Just to put an and remove it, settle the problem. You say, God, God will help the person. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus, God will provide food for you. In the name of Jesus, God will provide food for you. Jesus Christ said, You are worse than infidel. A fair minute. No abusers of themselves with mankind. Abuser of themselves with mankind. Now, what is how can you abuse yourself? How can you abuse yourself? How can you abuse yourself? You can abuse yourself maybe through pornography. You can abuse yourself. You can abuse yourself maybe through through 
taking some mad drugs. You can abuse yourself. Guys, you remember, Bible talk about all the sin that you do is not to yourself. But when you do fornication, you commit it to yourself. So you are abusing yourself in that wise. So abuses of mankind means anything that you do that hurts mankind, abusers of mankind, anything that you do, that is immorality, immorality in the law. Let's go and see how the Bible says it. No abuser of themselves with mankind. Now that verse of the Bible is so complex. You abuse yourself with mankind. That means if you take it go to my own understanding of that Bible, it's very, very dangerous. Because if God said the old commandment should be love God and love your neighbor. Now, how can you not abuse yourself with mankind? If I take a book, I lack the power to go and read. I lack maybe whatever will make me not to lack, to lack the power to go and take care of somebody. I can take drugs. I can enjoy it. In fact, I may eat meat so much. Because the only two commandments, if you marry the scripture, you will know. The two commandments, he said, love God. That's the theory. Then love your neighbor as yourself. That's the practical. Now, abuser of yourself means you do anything. You could do tattoo. You could do anything. You could cut your hair. You could do anything that make you ineffective to bless others, to love that your neighbor that God said in the first place. To commit adultery, to do fornication. Because if you commit adultery, you have abused yourself and you have abused mankind. That is the logic there. Anything that you do, that you abuse yourself and you also abuse mankind. That is it. Let's go to the next one. Not thief. Wow, how many of you are thief here? How many of you used to put on your mother's spot? How many of you used to do anything? You see something is not your own. You cannot. Me to say, there is one day that one woman I hit just last week. I be yesterday. I be here first day. The woman forget money in my hand. The woman forget money, man. And I and when I remember, I went back and I returned the money. And the woman said I have given her the money. That situation was crazy. The woman said I have given her the money, but me I never have not given. I said, okay, put me. I said even if. But if we because I, I was sure that I did not give it to her. So, and I gave it to her the money. So, because that money, but thank God that me, I have some little money. That money will not have helped me. 